How are you doing this, Martin from Guidance for Life? Have you ever heard of a vegetable called mashua? It's actually a tuberous nasturtium uh, from the Andean mountains in South America. And you can eat the leaves as a salad crop. They're not quite as spicy as uh, the nasturtium leaves. And you can also eat the flowers, which are actually fruity and sweet uh, at, the end, at the very end of the growing season, like now um, at the end of November or the 1st of December. Of course, the tubers are also edible, both cooked or uh, raw. With raw, they're very, very spicy. So be careful, don't eat too much of it. Um, you can always uh, grate it over salad. A little bit like a radish, but even more spicy. With mashua, definitely, the more space you give them, uh, the bigger the tubers and the more you get. Uh, so if you give them infinite space, so to speak, maybe five square meters and um, a trellis, like the one behind me here, simply some slow trees. And you can see they've actually grown all the way up to the top. And there's a ton of flowers there, which I'll be eating in a minute with my sandwich. So they can, they can actually climb quite high, maybe probably up to four or five meters, maybe even further if you give them the chance. And of course, vertical gardening is always a good thing because you're using your space more efficiently and then you can grow more stuff. And if you're looking for tubers to start growing these yourself, please take a look at our website. Uh, we have a, a lot of different varieties of different types of tubers like Jerusalem artichokes, uh, mashua, oka, apios, uh, Chinese artichokes, and a number of other ones. You can see here where this was planted was actually just here into a no-dig garden bed. And the bed itself is actually five meters long and the plant has climbed up all the way up to the top. I won't actually harvest this particular plant because obviously the leaves are still intact as you can see and the frost hasn't actually damaged those yet but on the ground the frost definitely has damaged them. You can see here even the stalks are also showing fatigue of the winter and it's been a very mild start to a winter but we did have some frosts there about a week ago or in the last two weeks even um, we had uh, some frost that went down to minus four and mashua is actually one of those kind of tubers plants that usually last the longest as well. Jerusalem artichokes finish much earlier and oka and the likes of yakon for example. Yakon is just about uh, ready to harvest too but we're not going to talk about that in this video. Don't worry we'll make a new yakon video, might as well. I spent many days with frozen feet out here in the garden uh, with the wellies on because there's no insulation in the wellies but now I finally bought myself mega socks. Check it out, <laughs> I look like a Bavarian, uh, but these are actually woolly um, socks, especially made to fit uh, wellies with no insulation in them. I hope they'll even fit with the socks on, but let's see. So here's another tip, whether you have long socks or not, uh, fold over your trousers like this, and then it makes it a lot easier to put on your wellies. And the trousers actually goes right down to the bottom and it keeps your legs warm. This is actually all mashuas, this whole side here. And um, the mashua blanca seems to be always out early. And you can see they're kind of entangling uh, with each other already because um, they want to climb. So you can see there's a bit of frost damage actually here on the side. And that's what happens, the plant just gets knocked back and it, it just grows again, it recovers. We found that both mashua and Jerusalem artichoke are not really worth planting uh, in pots and starting off early in a greenhouse in March or April. We found that they're actually uh, just as well off planted out directly and makes for less work. So it makes sense to me. And I think it's actually probably more productive to plant those out directly because they can already start making roots uh, even before the last frost of the spring. Now that's enough said, let's uh, get started and dig up some mashua tubers. We'll start with this one here. This is actually a volunteer from last year. Um, we're just going to cut back the foliage and the stems uh, with the secretaires. We're going to fold them over and then get rid of those first and let's see what we can get out of this one plant. You can see how much space it's taken up, a bit more than allocated. Uh, they, it has grown over the path onto the next bed, but there was very little planted there anyway.
I just want to show you this. So this plant, um, there's actually two plants here, I believe, but uh, either way, those have volunteered from last year. And that can happen, we just let them uh, go ahead and grow because we had nothing else planted here in this area really um, for the most part anyway of this growing season you can see these are the stems if you cover those in uh, soil they will actually sprout roots like this and they'll make more little tubers uh, on the side but if you don't do that uh, the plant won't actually root down into the ground much you can see um, not all by itself unlike um, some of uh, some of the other plants like um, oka for example and olicus so you can see here um, this plant is not completely finished with its production but I'd say it'll go fairly soon anyway because we're gonna get some fairly hefty frost soon I'd say and uh, half of the foliage so far has um, died back from the frost so a plant like this could produce more of course than if you were to plant uh, a whole bed full uh, one foot apart or or maybe 40 centimeters apart. Now, so you can see one was already exposed, so let's give it a try and see, can we pull this up? I think I need to kind of dig around it first. It's kind of like in the shape of um, some of the Jerusalem artichoke, uh, the way they grow. You can see here, they mostly come out of the bottom of the plant. Oh, look at that one. Some of them actually tend to crack when they get too big, you can see here. But it's no harm to it. It doesn't usually go rotten over the winter. Oh, pretty good. All right, let's get to the next one. That is the same variety I can see. Great, I just realized the camera wasn't recording. So um, yeah, similar enough to the other plant, not quite the same yield. A little bit less still quite a few tubers in it and I'm gonna put those all into a crate now and the crowns too because there's lots of little bits and pieces that could be replanted Okay, so let's see how the Mashua Blanca did. It's a white one. It's actually the first one we ever had. And it also happens to be the most popular. Let's take a look. That's not too bad considering they were all planted uh, only a foot apart but this was the one at the edge of course plants uh, any plant that you put at the edge of a no dig bed uh, always does better than the rest of them of course because it has more space and probably more sun exposure but um, if you were to do that at the edge of a raised bed with wood si wooden sides um, you'll find that the, actually the plants on the edges will dry out the quickest or the most frequent and those plants probably won't do that well even though they have more exposure to the sun but obviously things drying out in a no-dig bed is not an issue let me try to dig up another one here oh, 
I'm pretty happy with that harvest though, considering this is actually planted in a bed and not on its own somewhere. I have done this before where I just planted, I just put down a big sheet of cardboard, or actually a double, double thickness. Big sheet of cardboard I put down uh, beside one of our hawthorn trees, and actually on the south side. And um, covered it with a couple of wheelbarrows of compost and some tubers, some of these actually, and they did very well. They grew for year after year, and I've been harvest from those uh, for two years now in the winter. Here you can see there's still a few small ones hidden inside here somewhere. We will keep that crown and try and uh, have a look at that. Maybe in the greenhouse because it's too cold out here. It is. It is very windy today. Well, at least it's not raining at the moment, so I'm happy enough. We'll go over to the pumpkin patch now and dig up some amarillo. This is our pumpkin patch. As you can see, it's all tubers now, mostly oak and mashua. So both the tubers and the pumpkins grew side by side until the pumpkins took over and kind of uh, stretched their leaves over the canopy. Um, so the tubers were slowed down in midsummer. Actually, that kind of probably worked out to their advantage because it would have been a bit too hot for them anyway. So once the pumpkin plants had finished and the leaves faded away, the mashuas and the ocas and the olicus are all uh, thriving. Until the first frost, of course, which has happened a few days ago. As you can see, everything looks a bit fatigued uh, from the beginning of the winter. Um, but I'm sure we'll get a few tubers out of here, as well as the pumpkins that we harvested here earlier in the year, which was actually starting at the beginning of September until the end of October. If you haven't seen the pumpkin video yet, I'll put a link below. So this is the Amarillo. Let's just cut off the stalks real quick. Now again, this is a plant that was at the edge of the garden, so it'll probably produce better than the rest of them in the middle. But nevertheless, let's see what comes out. Let me just shake that more. There's a good few in it. Lots of small little ones though. There you can see the mother. Yeah, I'd say it is similar to what, what happens in potatoes. See the mother plant goes rotten, or the mother tuber actually goes rotten at the end of the growing season. So that's the mother tuber, as you can see, uh, that might still grow, we're going to replant that in a pot just to see, a little experiment. Oh, let's see. It's not a bad harvest, very similar uh, tuber structure, or the shape of it is very similar to uh, some of the other varieties. So a quick review on the mega socks or the welly socks that I got uh, just today. And um, I've worn them for three hours out here now and my feet are okay. Normally my feet would be ice blocks after only about probably 20 minutes, especially if it's um, close enough to five degrees Celsius or maybe even lower. There's a lot of ways to eat mashua or you can cook it or you can eat it raw. Raw is probably best off to just grate it uh, into a, a salad, for example, because it's really spicy, even more spicy than nasturtium or uh, radish even. Of course, the leaves can be eaten raw in a salad and uh, all throughout the growing season. And the flowers at the very end of the growing season, like uh, November, December, um, the flowers are really nice and fruity and kind of sweet as well, the nectar in them. The leaves are not spicy at all. They're mild, uh, unlike uh, nasturtium leaves. They're quite spicy. 
So you could actually add quite a few mashua leaves into a salad and um, it's a perennial salad crop basically. Um, really useful to have and in the winter time you can eat the tubers, you can even roast them like with most of the tubers like oka, mashua and Jerusalem artichoke um, you could, roasting them is probably the best way to eat them uh, and the most tasty as well. You don't need to cure uh, mashuas, uh, there's no inulin in them like the Jerusalem artichokes. Thanks a million for watching the video and we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, many more to come and hopefully more general ones as well on um, how to actually start your own garden. But if you're interested in um, the Jerusalem artichoke video and you haven't seen it yet, please take a look because that was the one we made last. I'll see you soon and we're going to be digging up the okas and the yakons next. Bye bye.